I'm Sarah, a tutor at Accountancy Learning, and in this video I'll take you through the Management Accounting Techniques AAT Sample Paper 1, Task 4. Now this task is all about the principles of budgeting and cash management. So let's have a look at our first question. Complete the following statements about budget. A budget which remains unchanged for a specified period of time is called, and then we've got these four options here. So we've got to choose from rolling budget, operational budget, fixed budget or flexed budget. So really the answer to, to this question is really in this term here. So unchanged, so it's fixed, stays the same. So out of these four options, a fixed budget is one that will remain unchanged for a specific, specified period of time. Then we've got a statement and we need to identify whether it's true or false. Period costs are identified as controllable costs when comparing differences between actual and budgeted figures. So for this one then, we need to consider what is a period cost. So a period cost is going to be things like your rent, rates and similar things. So when we're looking at these, the rent and rates and similar items are not controllable in the short term. And they can often only be negotiated or changed at a certain time, whether it be annually, um, it may even be every three years. It really depends on contracts um, that have been signed. Depending on the company size, a lot of managers and supervisors that may be um, looking at these comparisons between actual and budgeted wouldn't actually have control over those periods costs. Um, because it could be that they're shared across different departments and therefore those costs are managed at higher levels. So looking at our statement then, it's saying period costs are identified as controllable costs when comparing the differences between actual and budgeted figures. So because we cannot control those costs, it's going to be false. They are only controllable when you are looking at things on a longer term basis. Next then, we're told that Mary Dairy Limited is a manufacturer of dairy products. During the budgetary planning process, a number of changes have been identified. Then we're asked to identify which two of the changes below would require the budgets to be changed. So there's going to be two out of these four where we're going to have to change the budget because of the information that we've been given. So looking at the first one, the introduction of an environmental charge on the level of waste produced. So this is going to be a new charge And it's based on the level of waste produced. So this is um, from production. So if we think about the business, Mary Dairy is a manufacturer of dairy products. So therefore, there is going to be waste produced from their production. There's now a new charge based on the level of waste. So the waste cost is going to increase. So therefore, we would have to change our budgets to incorporate that additional cost. Um, an increase in the living wage, but all staff are paid in excess of this rate. So this isn't going to affect our budget because they're already paid in excess of the living wage. So if the living wage was say five pounds and it was going up to six pounds, 
it could be that the staff is paid at seven pounds. So that change from five to six isn't actually going to affect the business. The closure of a major milk supplier, but similar alternatives can be sourced elsewhere. So obviously initially you start thinking, well, a closure of a supplier, it means we're going to have to change supplier. What's going to happen to our costs? But because we're told that there are similar alternatives available, then we can source that elsewhere. So there's not going to be uh, any significant change to the budget. And then finally, the last one then, by process of elimination, we know we'll have to tick this one an unexpected increase in the rate of inflation. So inflation is going to affect all of our costs. That is the rate at which our prices rise. So that's going to affect um, anybody. So all of the costs involved in the manufacturing of dairy products will increase. So therefore the budgets would have to be changed. So next then, we are moving on to a question about uh, cash flow. And we are given a cash flow forecast for company X and we are asked to identify the point at which company X will go into its overdraft. So an overdraft is the uh, agreed amount of money that you can overspend. So you, your account will hit zero and then you go into your overdraft. So the point at which that's going to happen then is going to be the point at which you go below zero in your cash flow. So this orange line is the cash flow and the red line is the overdraft. So this point here is where you're going to end up going into your overdraft. We're then given the same chart, but this time we're asked to identify the point at which company X will exceed its overdraft limit and therefore need to raise further capital. So when you go into your overdraft, it's not going to be uh, an uncapped overdraft. You are going to have a limit to that. And that is shown by the red line. So their overdraft limit is £10,000. So if you're going to exceed that, it means you're going to need more than that £10,000 overdraft. So the point at which those two lines intersect is the point at which the overdraft limit, limit will be exceeded and the company will need to raise further capital. The next one then is carrying on with our cash flow questions. And the first one is about identifying one way a business can improve its cash flow in the short term. So let's have a look at the answers that we're given. So extending credit terms offered to customers from 60 to 90 days. So if we do this, it means they will pay slower which isn't going to get us any cash any quicker. So because we're looking at how to improve the cash flow, that isn't going to help. The second one is reduce the credit terms offered to customers from 60 to 30 days. This means they need to pay faster, which means our cash flow will improve. We'll have more cash coming in and it will be coming in quicker. So we know that's going to be the right answer. Just looking at the other two to cover them off. Offer credit to existing customers who currently pay by cash. So that's effectively reducing the amount of cash that's coming into the business because they would then pay at the end of credit terms rather than paying at the time of transaction. And the last one, increase the credit limit 
of existing customers. So that means customers are going to be buying more from us because they have a credit limit of say 10,000 instead of 5,000. So they would then be able to have 10,000 pounds worth of goods without paying us money any quicker. It's not going to affect the amount of money that comes into the business. The next one is identify which one of the following will have a negative impact on the cash flow of a business in the short term. So this time we're looking at negative impact on the cash flow. So delaying all supplier payments for two weeks. So this means less money is leaving the business because we are delaying our payments. So that would actually improve the cash flow. The second one, paying all suppliers as soon as invoices are received, regardless of agreed terms. So this means we would be paying earlier than we need to. So this would be a negative impact because we could keep the cash in the business for a bit longer if we stick to the agreed terms. So that one is going to be our answer. And then finally, just to cover, we've got our answer now, but just to cover off the last one, negotiating extended credit terms with suppliers. So again, this means we're going to be paying later because our terms have been extended. So this would then improve the cash flow. Information about Penny Troubles Limited and they are a manufacturer of toys. The owners of the business are reviewing the working capital cycle of the business for the year ending 30th of November 20x5 and we've been given an extract of the financial statements. Just to make you aware, you will be able to view this information on one side of your screen by pressing the button in the references section to the right hand side in your exam. We're then asked to complete the table for Penny Troubles Limited to show the working capital cycle for the year ending 30th of November 20x5. So we need to enter our answers to the nearest whole day and make sure we enter positive figures. So let's have a look first of all at the trade receivables collection period. So for your trade receivables collection period, the formula that we need to use, and remember we need to learn these formulas, is going to be our trade receivables divided by our revenue. And because we're working in days, we need to times it by 365. So we can take the figures from the chart that we're given up here. So we've got our trade receivables and our revenue. So 289686, and we're going to divide that by 2,185,900. Two, uh, 2 and we're going to times it by 365 days, and to the nearest day is 48. The trade payables then. So the formula we then need to use for the trade payables is going to be our trade payables. We're going to divide it by cost of sales and again multiply it by 365. So again, we're going to take the figures from our chart up here. Do 290,256 divided by 1,525,650 and multiply that by 365 to give us 69 days to the nearest whole day.
Now, before we just move on, the way to remember these formulas is that we are always going to be looking at trade receivables uh, collection period. It's always going to be based on your trade receivables, which is connected to your revenue because that's the money coming into the business. And then your trade payables collection, uh, trade payables payment period, sorry, will be your trade payables divided by your cost of sales because that's what it costs in order for us to make those uh, products. Then lastly here for the first set of calculations is the inventory holding period. And this one is going to be your inventory. So again, we're starting with the name of the calculation that we're doing. We're going to be dividing it by cost of sales because it's related to production and multiplying that by 365. So again, we're now going to be using our inventory figure, 168,293, and we'll divide that by our cost of sales figure, which we have already used up here. Multiply it by 365, and we get 40 days. Then finally, the last part then is to work out the working capital cycle. So the working capital cycle is your trade receivables collection period plus your inventories plus, sorry, minus your trade payables payment period. So to put this in, in other terms, with the information that you're given, your working capital cycle is your assets here minus your liabilities. Sometimes it's helpful to think about it in that way. So your trade receivables would be an asset, your inventory is an asset, and your trade payables is your liability. So we've got trade receivables of 48 plus an inventory holding period of 40 and then we minus off our 69 days payment period for trade payables which gives us 19 days for our working capital cycle.